coming into this movie, I mean, what a challenge to follow on from the first one. What did you think was sort of important to do this time? I think it was important, frankly, to make this movie a standalone movie. Like, have it work on its own terms. And, and you know, if you've seen the original film that we did, or if you see the old, you know, TV show, great, you'll be rewarded. But it, it was not, uh, it was meant to be, uh, you know, no experience required. Like, make a movie where you can just enjoy the film uh, and introduce the characters from the beginning. And so I, it was important to kind of go bigger, go better, you know, go deeper. Uh, but most importantly, not treat it like a sequel. But also, I mean, this is called Into Darkness. There is a darker elements here. The characters are going through a lot mm -hmm. more in terms of development as well. There's references like terrorism. Mm -hmm. I mean, was that all important too to kind of make it a, almost a darker story? Well, I do think that, you know, the, the, the title, uh, it, it could be a little bit misleading because, mm -hmm. the you know, there, there is no darkness without light. And yeah. the, the characters who go into this... Uh, this sort of terrifying adventure uh, are characters that are making you laugh, that are making you feel, that you love, and uh, they're sort of the audience's, you know, proxy. So they go through this this uh, pretty intense, challenging scenario that that is sort of personified by the character played by Benedict Cumberbatch, who's amazing. Uh, and and so to me, the the ideas uh, of the threat are things that are, I think, frightening because they feel legitimate, they feel real, they're grounded, they're not kind of fantasy threats. They're things you go, oh, that seems like, uh, you know, those are those bad guys feel like bad guys that I actually have heard of, you know, and, and, and know about. And so I think that the, the key to the movie is keeping it an entertainment. It's not supposed to be a preachy film, mm. but make sure that the villain, uh, you know, himself, but also the, the themes of the movie resonate and feel like they, they are re relevant to the world today. Otherwise, it's just sort of a disposable, you know, Thing. I mean, there is a reference, obviously, to one of Star Trek's wonderful films, The Wrath of Khan, mm -hmm. uh, homage, and almost a, a, a role reversal with Spock and Kirk mm -hmm. in, in the scene. I mean, was that nice to sort of play with the emotions and play with that? The, the idea was to sort of embrace elements that have pre-existed in mm -hmm. a way that uh, if you are a fan, you'll appreciate, but if, mm -hmm. if you're not, it, it's irrelevant. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it, because we sort of uh, have are charting our own path here, mm -hmm. uh, we have the ability to sort of look at what has pre-existed and sort of use it in a way that honors what people do know and what people who are fans have, have come to love. But uh, again, th 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 there were so many things over the course of the, the, the film that were, you know, challenging and fun to do. And, and among those was, you know, making some references to uh, pre-existing stories uh, in, in Trek canon. Um, 3D was a, 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 I think, does seem to be perfect for this. I mean, mm. is that sort of fun to actually play with that? Yeah, I mean, what, once yeah. I got past my issue of never really loving 3D and then seeing some of the original film we did converted and realizing, oh, this could be actually pretty spectacular. We had an amazing 3D team that uh, had always wanted to do certain things they never had a chance to do mm. before. So we're really sort of pushing the envelope in certain ways, doing some things that, that haven't uh, been seen. And combining that with IMAX, we shot uh, all the exterior scenes, of which there are many, uh, about a, over a quarter of the film, uh, in IMAX, which is an enormous uh, film format, which means the resolution is incredible. So that combined with the 3D, I think, really creates an experience that doesn't feel like things you've seen before. You are kind of the keeper of the flame of many amazing stories now. Star Trek and now Star Wars. I mm. mean, responsibility, how are you feeling about that? <laughs> uh, it's uh, really a, a, a thrill to yeah. be able to be involved in, in either of these uh, things. and. You know, frankly, I, I feel very lucky to be working on uh, all the different projects that we, we are working on. And I'm obviously hardly alone. The producers, the writers, the, the actors, the cast, the crews. I mean, these are people, so many people who are s brilliant, so much better at what they do uh, than I am at what I do. So I feel like I'm in incredibly good company. More Star Trek or we don't know yet? Oh, we don't know. We've had a lot of sort of casual discussions, but nothing formal. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Really Great. appreciate it. Great.